This is question five of the 2022 paper one, Leave Insert Order Level Maths. So as always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and click like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Okay, so this question five, we're looking here at scientific notation. So it says write each of the following values in the form of a by 10 to the power of n and a should be between one and 10, okay? If you notice here, A should be bigger than or equal to one, which should be less than 10, and your power is going to be a positive whole number. So that's what Z means, okay? Actually, sorry, positive or negative whole number. So this A must be between one and nine, or just below 10, so we can say nine by nine, 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 whatever. And this n should be a, a whole number. Now, 1,200, okay, we can mess with that. 1,200 could be expressed in a variety of different ways. And this is a trick in maths. Like you could say that's 2,400 divided by 2. Now, it's not helpful, but you could say that, okay? I could also, if you're using notation, I could say that's 120 by 10 is the same thing. Now, or I could say, sure, isn't, isn't 12 by 10 to the power of 2? or 12 by 100 equal to 1200. Or I could say 1.2 by 10 to the power of three, which is a thousand, okay, is the same thing. Now, is this number A between one and, and, and 10? Yeah. Is this number a, a, a positive or negative whole number? It is, and that's our answer. Now, if I want to check this particular question, I can use the calculator, okay, to back work it and go is 1.2 by 10 to the power of three equal to 1200? It is, so that's the right answer. Now part B or two there says, do the same thing for 0.27. Now if you see there, 0.27 is less than one, okay? So we could, in a sense, just use um, the decimal place. If I move the decimal place once to the right, okay, that gives me 2.7. Now, 2.7 and 0.27 are not the same thing, okay? But we can multiply that by 10 to the power of, of minus one, okay? Now, 10 to the power of minus one is the same thing as one tenth. And there's a rule of powers which proves this. Like, one tenth is the same thing as uh, 10 to the power of one. If you use the reciprocal rule, bring something above the line, it multiplies by the top, but you get one by 10 to the power of negative one is the same thing. Now, in the calculator, we can just prove that, okay? So let's go 10 to the power of negative one, okay? And it should give me a fraction, one tenth, okay? 10 to the power of negative two is one over 100. So you could call that like 2.7 by one tenth. Same thing. Now, that's not how they want it, though. They say they want it in this format. You might get the attempt for doing that because they go, so one ten to is ten to the minus one. But it's not how they want it. And the leave are when they say they want something in a specific way, that's the way you should give it to them. Like they're the ones who are judging if you've followed the instructions properly. So that's part A. We're 10 marks. Now I personally like scientific notation. I think it's predictable. You can check with the calculator. Okay. For example, I didn't actually do that there, but 2.7 by 10 to the minus one, okay, minus one should be 0.27. Okay, now it's given me in fraction form. In decimal form, it's 0.27. So you can almost BS this by tapping away at the calculator until you get something that works for you, okay? Now part B then, um, actually that's just the answer for part um, A in the notes. Then part B, this looks challenging. A falcon can dive at a speed of up to 120 miles per hour. One mile is approximately 1.6 kilometers. It says use this to work out how long it would take the falcon to travel 100 meters when diving at this speed. Okay, so let's just write stuff out. You can underline it. Speed is equal to 120 miles per hour. And they tell us that one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. Now, even before I do this, I, I, I could work out what's one kilometer in miles, but we have to figure out what we have to do here. Um, 
use this work to work out how long it would take the falcon to travel 100 meters. Okay, so to get the attempt, I'm going to try, like, I mean, so one mile is this. I wonder what 120 miles is. Okay, so once you have a conversion statement like this, to convert one mile into 120, you could, you could multiply that by 120. You're allowed to do that as long as you do it to both sides. So one by 120 is 120. That seems kind of funk to do it, but I prefer doing conversions when you put into algebra, it just makes more sense. And then 1.6 by 120 is calculator job. So 1.6 times 120, 120, that gives me an answer of 192. So 192 kilometers. Now the question here is going in meters. So let's convert that to meters. 192 kilometers is equal to 192 by 1,000 meters. I add all the three zeros, that's 1,000 or 192,000 meters. Okay. But let's see, is that helpful? So we're talking over here, and we, 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 we would have most certainly got the attempt at least. Okay. Now we know that speed is equal to distance over time. Now we know from the statement that the um, Falcon can travel at 192,000 meters in one hour. Okay. Now the question does say, give your answer in seconds. So we should swap out that 192,000 and one hour, okay, in seconds is equal to 60 minutes by 60 seconds, which is 3,600. So we're going to divide that by 3,600. Now this calculator job. Okay, so one nine two zero zero zero. Divide that by three thousand six hundred. Okay, should give us now decimal fifty three point three. So fifty three point three three. If I round that to one decimal place, like the question asks, that's fifty three point three meters per second. It's going to put S to represent speed. We should always keep the left going just so we don't forget what we're doing. Um, I think that's it. Okay, so it's a really tricky question. I had to look back at the notes there at one stage because I just went down a rabbit hole in my own head. Um, so let's reflect on that using the notes here. So first thing we did there was, actually, first thing I did was here is this. I said speed is the distance over time. And they told me that that's 120 miles per one hour. But the, they want the answer in meters and seconds. So we first of all have to work out, well, what's 120 miles in kilometers? And in a sense, why give you this conversion if they didn't want you to use it? So when I, initially when I did it, I just did that first, just to get something. And I used the conversion statement, one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So what's 120 miles in kilometers? We multiply both sides by 120, and I figured out that 192 kilometers is the same thing as uh, 120 miles. Then I said, well, that's fine. But we wanted not in kilometers, but in meters. So I multiplied 192 kilometers by 1,000 to get 192,000 meters. That's that. That's the distance traveled in meters. So that's what I swapped out here, because I, I don't want it in miles. I want it in meters. We did that. Then we don't want it in hours. We want it in seconds. And one hour has 60 minutes. Every minute has 60 seconds. So it's 60 times 60 gives me the 3,600. Divide those two in. I got the 160 over 3. Uh, converted that to... Um, uh, decimal, I got 53.3. I just realized I haven't actually finished the question. Okay. I just worked out uh, its speed in kilometers or sorry, meters per second. Okay. I didn't actually find out how long it took the Falcon to travel 100 meters. So, in, in essence, it's how many 160 divided by threes or whatever it was in the last line. How many 53.3s are there in 100 meters? Okay. So that's what I've done here. I've divided 100, divided by 160 over three. Now, if I divide by 53.3, if I had rounded early, uh, like I did in the previous part, and I divided 100 by that, I might get a slightly wrong answer and get a early rounding penalty. Um, when you do it using the actual number, so the number was 160 divided by three. So in essence, I'm going there, uh, time is equal to 100 
divided by 160 over three. Now that you can just use the calculator, but it, that's technically a fraction divided by a fraction because you can always express a number as a fraction by dividing by one. Okay. Now, if I was to do that um, by hand, if you take the bottom fraction and turn it upside down and multiply it by the top fraction, you're going to end up with 300 over 160. And then straight away, the zeros can cancel, divide by 10 top and bottom, you get 30 over 16. And then, I'm not sure what number dividing the both of them, two would. You get 15 over eight. And look at that, says you have to go decimal, okay? Um, because they want the answer in decimal places. So let's use the calculator for that. Actually, I have it over here. 1.875 seconds, and they want it to one decimal place, so the seven is what matters. It's bigger than five, so the next number before it rounds up by one. And we get the 1.9 seconds. I should read the question carefully, okay? It's an absolute flaw of mine. I half read the question and then forget something at the end. I would have probably only achieved eight marks there, okay? Yeah, eight marks, uh, most likely. I'd have to go check the marking scheme to be sure. So that's question five, part B. Now question five, part C here. Uh, what's going on? The diagram below shows the graphs of the function k of x. So that one there is k of x and m of x. Okay, so these are just two functions. So I would remember that with functions, this is y and this is y, but it's just two different equations, okay? I don't know what the equations are. I'm not being told them. And it's saying for the difference, for the x value is zero all the way as far as five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's all we're considering is that small part of this bigger uh, function. And then it's saying, use the graphs to estimate each of the following for that domain, that range, that, that, those x values. So part one says the two values of x for which m of x is equal to zero. Now, in function notation, if, if you remember that this is y, it's saying, what's the two values of x for when y is zero? Now, you have to remember this, it's a really fundamental thing in functions and coordinate geometry. All along the y-axis, x is zero. For example, that coordinate there is zero, three. 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, etc. All the way across here on the x-axis, y is 0. So where does your m of x thing cross where y is 0? Well, it does it here, and it does it here. So x is 1, and x is 4.5, 4.5, and that should be it. Now then, uh, let's just double check, it's right, yeah, it is right. So part three says, or part two says, the range of values of x for which k of x, the other graph, is less than m of x. So this bigger up here, okay, goes down and m of x is going up. So at this stage here, k of x is lower than it. So what's the difference in those x values? It's from two as far as, what's that, three and a half? As far as three and a half. Okay, now you could write that in more mathy language, where x is bigger than or equal to two and less than or equal to three and a half, or 3.5. That should be it, okay? And um, yeah, that's the answer. So trying to show you that it's that part where the k of x graph is small, is lower than the uh, m of x graph. Okay, and that should be the end of question five. Okay, so as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. If you like and subscribe, you'll get access to more playlists. And see you on question six.